Oh man, it's supposed to rain all week. Well, this car won't do. Time to get something better. Oh yeah, way better. Hello everybody, welcome to Mondays with Mover. Today is Monday, I am Mover. C.W. Lemoyne, author of the Spectre series, Absolute Vengeance, and I am the Sheepdog. And more importantly, tomorrow is Tuesday, the 22nd, which means I am the Sheepdog. Uh, will be released in ebook formats with the uh, paperback to follow probably in about a week or two. Uh, just finishing that up, so I had to wait until the actual release date of the ebook to put that out. So exciting stuff uh, available Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Links in the description uh, if you're looking for it. But uh, one of the more serious things I wanted to talk about, I put it on the Facebook page the other day. You know, there was a shooting, another school shooting uh, this week in the news. Uh, this time in Santa Fe. I'm not going to glorify, you know, what the kid did. Uh, it's terrible. It's tragic. You know, ten people died, but. One of the things I will talk about is there was an SRO, school resource officer, that was injured uh, engaging the suspect. And it, it highlights the importance of these school resource officers. In, in this book, I Am the Sheepdog, Alex Shepard uh, is under an assumed identity, and his new identity is that of a school resource officer. He gets a, a canine uh, under a program that's, that's uh, funding canines for, uh, for schools. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, for canines for kids, uh, it's a good cause, but it, it just highlights the importance of having you know armed security there. Um, so it kind of makes I am the sheepdog a little bit of a touchy subject, but I think it's important uh, just to highlight you know when when the gunfire is happening, you know these guys are you know it's the thin blue line. That's that's the that's who's running to the sound of gunfire. And you know when we were in the, the academy, uh, and even now you know some of the most uh, difficult training is an active shooter scenario because there's chaos, there's people running every direction, you know, you have a limited amount of time and seconds count, you know, it's, it's, it's getting there and neutralizing the threat as quickly as possible because for every second, you know, somebody could, could pass away or, or be injured. So uh, it's kind of bad timing, especially with the book coming out, but I think it does highlight uh, the, the need for that. Uh, on a lighter note, I want to thank, uh, on the law enforcement side, I want to thank Avalon John from the uh, Corvette Forum. Shout out to him. He sent me this shirt, Delaware State Patrol. Uh, it's their EOD Explosive Ordnance Disposal, where initial success or total failure is their motto. Uh, so thanks for that. You should be getting a copy of Absolute Vengeance in the mail in the next day or so. So I hope you enjoy that. And once again, you know, thanks for that. So uh, kind of a light show today. Don't really have, uh, you know, nothing really on the ZL1. No, I didn't trade it in for a Humvee. However, uh, Humvee is featured. Some of the stuff we do with the uh, Special Operations Division uh, is featured today, one of which being a Humvee. And uh, that highlights the importance, again, of the LISA 1033 program. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But the LISA 1033 program is a federal program where military surplus vehicles are uh, leased or sold um, to law enforcement agencies for their use. And everybody says, well, it's, it's the militarization of the police force. Well, not really. Uh, we have uh, several Humvees and these five ton vehicles and they are, you know, it's less than a couple grand for the entire thing because it's a, it's a very cheap program. And what it allows us to do, you know, we're not going around kicking people's doors in, uh, but when floods happen, and you'll see some clips here in a little bit, but when floods happen and when stuff happens, uh, the equipment saves lives. You know, it's very important. And, you know, for SWAT or for, you know, the air unit and stuff like that, it's very important because it allows these departments to have equipment that they otherwise couldn't afford uh, and saves the taxpayer a bunch of money. So it's a very important program. I'm glad uh, uh, the new president has authorized it once more, and it's kind of coming back because that was one thing in the last administration that kind of went away. So I uh, hope you enjoy this episode. Uh, I had a lot of fun filming, a lot of fun going out uh, and, and working this detail this week. And uh, I'll see you on the other side. Thanks. So on the last episode, I talked about some of the stuff the Reserve Division does. And, you know, we're all volunteers, guys who uh, do this for free, uh, take their time off, go through the normal training and stuff. And uh, we, did, we showed you some criminal patrol stuff that we do. Um, but that's not just the only thing we do. We actually do some um, uh, 
uh, community involvement stuff like today I'm going to pick up the uh, Humvee and we're gonna take it to one of the state parks and um, at the state park we're meeting with the public we're gonna show them uh, the Humvee and the boats and some of the stuff from the uh, Special Operations Division and the reason that's important uh, especially the Humvee we have uh, a couple Humvees we have um, five ton uh, like former troop transport these are all mill surplus vehicles that we got uh, through the Lisa 1033 program and the reason that's important is because uh, we have floods here and these are we call them high water rescue vehicles uh, a couple years ago when I was pretty new to the reserve we had a big flood uh, back in March, back was the day of my book signing for Brick by Brick, and we took the Humvees and we took the uh, the, the five tons and we went out and uh, a lot of the houses have flooded and that's what we use. So when a hurricane comes through or when um, there's flooding or any kind of natural disaster and stuff, these vehicles uh, can go where other vehicles can. I mean, the, the five ton itself is a six by six, you know, and these are four wheel drive Humvees and stuff. So. Uh, we use that we show the public, you know, kind of some of the other facets of what we do It's not just law enforcement. We do some uh, some rescue stuff as well uh, search and rescue uh, Especially with the marine division and stuff. So today we're going to do that, but that's not all we do. We do festivals. We do um, uh, Security for parades, uh, especially Mardi Gras time uh, this Mardi Gras escorted one of the local bands to um, uh, Across the lake to New Orleans for the uh, parade there and then also uh, we do high school football games in addition to you know backing up the uh, full-time deputies uh, out on patrol so a lot of facets of this this job and you know it's that it's very rewarding you know it's a lot of fun to do it's a lot of fun to to hang out with the community and, and meet everybody and and kind of you know show them what we're about so that's what we're on our way to go do today It's like 90 something but the heat index is like 105 and we're in all this crap even with this nice mesh uh, polo that they let us wear now uh, it's hot but uh, no that was a lot of fun um, so what it was we were doing a show-and-tell for uh, it's a little camp uh, it's a summer camp for kids that have lost loved ones and they asked us to come out and then we took the, the boat and the Humvee in the command center and we showed them uh, around. We explained the missions of you know all the vehicles and let them crawl around it and showed them all the cool lights and sirens and stuff and you know let kids be kids. It was a lot of fun, you know, it's just you know, stuff like that, you know. So I, I recommend it. I think it's a great way to, you know, volunteer and get back to the community, give some community service. Um, while you know it's it's interesting you know it's not just picking up cans on the side of the road it's actually doing something that makes a difference so um, 
interesting time and uh, looking forward to the next one. All right, welcome to uh, this week's edition of the Mover Mailbag. Uh, this question comes from Facebook. And dear Mover, what do you think about the changes in cast missions? Well, um, I wouldn't say CAS has changed as much as it has evolved. I mean, it's not the same as, you know, World War II, Vietnam, uh, stuff like that. The basics have remained the same. I mean, to me, it's the most important mission or, or one of the most important missions we have because you're directly, you know, supporting the, the tip of the spear uh, out on the, on the battlefield. But um, it has advanced with technology, uh, you know, with the advent of Datalink. You know, now we have sensors, targeting pods, uh, that allow the JTAC or the Joint Terminal Attack Controller, the guy on the ground that's uh, talking to the aircraft, he can now see what we're looking at and help with the talk on. We can also, um, with coordinates being passed digitally back and forth, um, you know, there's there's smart weapons that are now out there. You know, you're not you're just using the gun or rockets, uh, although that is still there. I mean, one of the reasons, you know, the A-10 and the AC-130 are still, you know, so relevant is because the most surgical weapon you have is the gun. And I'm not sure that's ever going to change, you know, as, you know, maybe as technology progresses, it will, but uh, it has advanced, you know, any aircraft technically can do close air support, a B-1 can do close air support, a B-52, um, you know, anything with a weapon on it that can uh, interact with the, with the JTAC, um, you know, as long as they can get a nine line and you know put the coordinates in and verify you know that that they have that they're actually attacking the right target you know anybody can do it and they, you know, they put lightning pods sniper pods on you know, larger aircraft and you know currently today you know in afghanistan and in fact some of the longest cast missions are being done by <clears throat> b-52s and b-1s you know so uh, but still you know the a-10 is a great airplane for that and you know it's still uh, my first love you know i was originally hired to go fly the a-10 when i was in college yeah, I, I still think you know it's, it's probably the best of what it does because that's all they do. I mean, they're like the, the F-15 of the. Oh, that's it's probably bad to say. You know, this guy's probably be insulted, but uh, I mean, it's a specialized mission uh, for air to ground. So it, it has evolved in that you know now it's it's more precise, more precision weapons, um, some you know higher altitude stuff. You know, you don't have to get in the weeds anymore. Uh, although it helps still. I mean, if you can't identify the target with the targeting pod, sometimes you have to go, you know, get low, get slow, and, and you know, get eyes on. Um, but, you, you know, you always have to know what you're attacking and, and make sure, you know, both parties agree before you, you drop any weapons or any ordnance comes off the aircraft. Um, still my favorite mission, you know, my last sortie in the uh, F-18, we went out and we did a close air support mission. Um, practice training, you know, we were training the JTACs where we had dropped a little live uh, thousand pound mark 83s and you know right after that we did bfm but man it's still i mean to me that's you know you're you're getting in the weeds and you know you're directly contributing to the mission you're directly supporting the guy on the ground so i don't think there's anything better than that um i hope that answers your question i mean there's not a lot i can get into you know without breaching classified i know some of the discussion was whether the f-35 is going to be as good uh, you know, that's pretty political. Um, you know, I don't think the F-35 will ever be as good as the A-10. I don't think any aircraft, you know, the AC-130 and the, the A-10 are the best gas platforms we have. And, you know, you, without a direct replacement, you know, they are trying. You know, it, it depends on the threat level is too. You know, we've been... The threat, the theater has been low threat casts uh, and counterinsurgency for the last, you know, decade, two decades. So it's really hard to say, you know, if we go to a high threat cast where you're actually, you know, forward line of troops, the forward edge of battle, and you're actually, you know, the tanks are coming through the fault of gap and, uh, you know, which is what we used to train for for the Cold War or, you know, generations before me, not necessarily me. But um, th that could change the, the dynamic, especially when you get in the double digit SAM threats and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, for now, I mean, there's nothing better. And, and even the A-10, you know, they've, they've got strategies for it. So, you know, they're not, you know, they're obviously uh, prepared for, for the current mission. So, uh, hope that answers your questions. If you have any questions for the Mover Mailbag, please uh, leave them in on Facebook or in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer uh, anything you have. And uh, thanks for watching. Well, that'll do it for this week's episode of Mondays with Mover. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, leave a like and a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see on future episodes. And if you've got anything you'd like to uh, me to answer on the Mover mailbag. If you haven't already, please uh, subscribe. And don't forget tomorrow, May 22nd, uh, 
I Am the Sheepdog, the second Alex Shepard book, will be live in uh, all ebook formats. Hard copy should be out in a week or so. Uh, that'll do it. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.